Marriage. It's an old age tradition that confirms a couple's love for one another. Most people end up getting hitched, some many times, we like this moment in our lives to be special and memorable. Around the world there are all sorts of strange traditions that center around a wedding. I'm sure we will cover some more on this channel in the future. But in this video we are covering the bedding ceremony. No. There is not going to be any sleeping going on, there will be. How can I say? Other stuff. There are many strange traditions that the royal family has practiced over the centuries. One of the strangest and most shocking is the bedding ceremony. It even appeared in an episode of the recent HBO series Game of Thrones. We will start at the beginning. When a member of the royal family or aristocracy got engaged, they would set a date for the wedding. On that date they would have a wedding ceremony. Then a wedding feast where all of their family, friends and officials would be present. After the feast the happy couple would go to their bed chamber, with their closest family and advisors following behind. The happy couple would then consummate the marriage and get passionate with an audience. Jolly good show. Yes, this really happened. On some occasions, the audience would be asked to leave the bedchamber just before the passion started, but not always. Consummating a marriage was usually the final step of the marriage. Doing the deed in bed together meant that the marriage had been finalized and that the bride had lost her virginity and was now locked into marriage. Ensuring that the marriage was consummated was important centuries ago, when marriages of the higher classes and royalty were often arranged and were seen more as ways of furthering their family name, or acquiring more wealth. So all who would gain from one of these arranged marriages would want to ensure that it was consummated and the deal was sealed. They would also usually want to see any evidence during or afterwards that the bride was a virgin. If the marriage was not consummated or the bride was not a virgin the marriage could be annulled. So consummation was incredibly important and sometimes needed to be witnessed. It was often the same with royal babies. The birth would have to be witnessed by certain members of the family and advisors to ensure no baby swapping took place. But that's another story for another video. So as we have seen, marrying for love was just a distant dream for a lot of people. Around the world, there are many variations on the bedding ceremony. It was widespread in Europe for centuries, but also in a lot of other countries including China. In England, the ceremony usually began with a priest blessing the bed, after which the newlyweds prepared themselves for bed and drank sweet and spicy wine. Some selected guests threw the couple's stockings at them. A hit was believed to indicate that the thrower would soon marry. Finally the curtains were drawn around the bed and either the selected guests would stay and watch. Or they would quietly leave. Shh. Quiet please. Some newlyweds refused to take part in the bedding ceremony. King Charles I of England notably barred the door of his bedroom. <laughs> Clear off! Oh, how rude! However, despite his rejection, the custom remained prevalent for another century among mainly the aristocracy including the royal family. In fact, decades down the road, the consummation of the future King William III, also known as William of Orange, and his bride Mary II of England, was witnessed by his uncle Charles II who not only shouted words of encouragement but offered advice to the couple. Yes, very good. In Scandinavia, it was the most distinguished wedding guest who led the bride to bed in a festive procession. After putting them in bed, the guests offered dishes to the newlyweds and quickly ate with them before leaving them alone. Due to the ritual's importance, specially decorated wedding beds were sometimes borrowed from family or friends. The bedding eventually became merely symbolic with the bride's parents covering the newlyweds with a blanket and then uncovering them. 
In the 16th century, in what is now Germany, the bedding ceremony was performed to the sound of pipes, drums, and obscene noises. After which the couple was left alone and the guests continued celebrating loudly enough for the newlyweds not to be heard. In many places, the newlyweds were dressed for bed separately by their family or community and then led to the bedroom. In others, the couple was expected to rejoin the party afterwards. Anne of Austria was just 11 years old when she was betrothed to King Louis XIII of France, who was also 11, in 1612. In fact, the two royals had both been born in September 1601, within days of each other. They were officially married three years later, at age 14. It was customary for a young bride and groom to live apart until they reached a more appropriate age. But the royal families insisted the couple consummate the marriage as soon as possible, so there could be no chance of annulment. What could possibly go wrong? Actually, quite a bit. Unlike his overtly masculine father, Henry IV, the groom wasn't quite as comfortable with the opposite sex, and that's putting it mildly. Legend has it, Louis had to be carried to the wedding bed. The deed was done with two nurses in attendance. Whilst in the 21st century we find this ceremony extremely bizarre, the people of the medieval era would not have found it bizarre at all and merely a part of getting married. We know it happened in the nobility, with the curtains of the bedchamber being drawn and the witnesses standing quietly, as far away from the bed as possible in the same room. What are your opinions on this strange but true tradition? Do you know of any strange traditions from history? Or maybe traditions even carried out today? Please drop a comment below or send us an email. Join us for more strange but true traditions soon. Thank you for watching, have a good day wherever you are in the world.